My name's Ben Guerin and I'm a student at Scots College in Wellington and I'm a member of the Warwick Junior Commission which is based in Warwick University in England and that's why I just went to New York on a trip. Well I am the service prefect at Scots so I coordinate things like the 40 hour famine with World Vision and run a whole bunch of other service based activities. I'm also the founder of a group called Wellington Motivated Young People and at the moment we're looking at a variety of projects in the region, one of which is a database of all volunteer opportunities for high school students and so that's what I'm kind of devoting my high school my, um, holidays to at this time and yeah, a bunch of other stuff. They Don't Teach You This in School is a w website aimed at kind of educating young people about the sort of things that you don't really understand at school. And the tagline that he and I actually worked on together is called The Other Side of Education. And Michael's a good friend of mine and he's been at Scots College for the last year and together we've kind of worked at some creative ways to make this website a bit more accessible to other to young people, getting more um, personalities involved with it. And in fact recently he's just got a video from the founder of Foursquare, which is a social media based in New York. And they're just little one minute snippet videos about what's one thing that you wish, um, or what, what one thing that you know now that you wish they didn't, that, or that you wish you knew when you were young. So my recent trip to New York was with this Warwick Uni uh, Junior Commission. So the Junior Commission is a group of 10 young people, aged 14 to 18, around the world. Botswana, Pakistan, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, India, and the UK, and New Zealand. And we we're all brought together to try and provide a voice for young people and a global perspective on a couple of issues that are kind of integral to the world today, the energy crisis and climate change. And we went to New York because, well New York's famous for being leaders in this sort of thing. We all know the work that Bloomberg's doing to make the city eco-green, eco sustainable. And we had a look at some of the projects that have been taken firsthand, as well as getting involved with um, international bodies like the UN to see things from their perspective as well. One of the things we had a look at was called Cool Roofs, and there's another one called White Roofs, and this is um, basically a project, quite simple really, just painting roofs white, because it reflects back a whole load of energy and saves money and cools the city down. So a city like New York, specifically Manhattan, has what's known as the urban heat island effect, the big, um, so much concrete, um, concrete absorbs about 80% of the heat that comes towards it and what this means is that cities are generally on average 2 to 3 degrees warmer than the surrounding land. So by painting the um, roofs white and doing other things like using um, certain rocks in the pavement and footpaths to make it lighter, you can actually cool the city dramatic, um, dramatically and save money on cooling. So the, the aim of the Junior Commission is to have um, at some point in time a report that can be given to basically anyone who's interested and they'll be available online. And so we're going to be meeting up in England sometime early 2012 to write up that final report. And in the months between now and then we're working online collaboratively to produce a whole bunch of documents to sort of work out where we stand. And the purpose of New York was going to be firstly to introduce everyone because we've obviously never met each other before and secondly to kind of have a look at some of the initiatives that are going on in the real world to be able to relate them to our studies and see first-hand sort of thing that's going on in response to energy crisis and climate change. I'd say, well as in New York, one of the most amazing things was, might sound a bit naff, but just how friendly everyone was. I was, I was expecting a big scary city, but I went there and I have to say they're some of the nicest people in the world. The, the city itself was incredible. I think I'd love to go back at some time, maybe even work with the UN or something for a year or something, because you just get a kind of a buzz when you're there. It's just, you get the feeling that anything's possible. And we had a look around, we looked at all the different parts of the city. We travelled right around Manhattan, went from the high school in Chelsea, which had all the windows boarded up and, you know, you didn't really want to spend any longer there than you wanted, right up to Empire State Building in Times Square. And we kind of saw an overall picture of a city that's got so diverse that there are so many opportunities there for anyone, really. Well, next year I'm continuing my studies at Scots, so it'll be my final year. Um, I'm hoping to get a decent mark in the IB, International Baccalaureate, that'll let me go to uni somewhere overseas. I'd like to hopefully go to study politics and international studies somewhere and end up in the United Nations in New York at some point in the next five, ten years. Energy and climate change is a massive issue and it affects every part of our everyday lives. I think with the work I've done with the Junior Commission and this visit to New York has broadened my horizons and I've realised that 
It's a challenge that can't be met just by someone sitting in a government policy room signing a paper. It's also a challenge that can't be met just by non-government organisations working at grassroots level. It's going to require some kind of holistic unity where research and development, government, the corporate sector and the um, grassroots movements are all striving for the same thing. And until that happens, I don't think we're actually going to find any productive solution to the problem. So one of the things I'm looking at is trying to work out how are we going to achieve this sort of cooperation? What are the driving factors that are going to make people work together to try and well, save the world we live in?